Hello. The first step of quality planning is to understand what it is and how it relates to project management. Quality definition. According to the PMBOK guide, quality is defined as the degree that a set of characteristics fulfill requirements. Or the definition that I really like, quality, is how well the thing performs as it was intended or expected to. The two terms I find most important with quality is stuck right in the definitions that we discussed. Degree is one, by the way, that's a thermometer, and that guy sure looked fulfilled. And that means customer fulfillment. You've probably heard the term continuous improvement. Sometime in your past, as adopted by the American Society of Quality, also known as ASQ, this is defined as making small improvements and measuring how much improvement is made along the way. And father of this is W. Edwards Deming. The cycle that he promoted is quite simple. It starts with breaking down your project into a sub-project. The sub-project starts with a plan, which is the first of four parts of a cycle. And this cycle is plan, doing, in other words, implementing the work, checking, which means doing quality validation of the work, and reacting to the quality and adjusting and going back and replanning and implementing, checking, that whole cycle over and over and over again. This is known as PDCA. In later years, Deming changed PDCA to PDSA. So you may see it in both ways. It's a badass. It's the study part that focuses on analyzing what your team just created, and this is where quality comes into play. In agile software development practices, there's an inherent emphasis towards quality planning and quality assessment. As a project goes through, PDSA, there's a reinforcement of the notion of continuous improvement. What else is there to talk about on this very subject of continuous improvement? Plenty, I'd say. In Sid Kemp's Quality Management Demystified, there are several key benefits that I think you're going to like. And the first is to improve quality. Second is to improve effectiveness of the team and the work produced. And the third is to improve efficiency, doing more with less, minimizing waste. Here's a couple of situations that you must ensure doesn't happen. And I call this the big bad no-nos. Overworking project teams can directly result in rework and staff attrition. Rushed plan quality tasks may result in errors going undetected, resulting in product or service failures. In other words, big bad quality problems. This leads us into the land of PMI's wonderful PMBOK guide, and this is the Quality Management Knowledge Area, otherwise known as KA. And in this, there are three defined processes. The one we're most concerned with in this tutorial is the plan quality process. So let's talk a little bit about quality planning concepts. Okay, there's of course TQM, Total Quality Management, was also developed by Deming. In his book, Out of the Crisis, he identifies 14 principles of management that are key to providing quality products, including a few that really apply to software development and IT. A sampling of it includes building quality into the product, stop quality as an inspection task. By focusing on quality, you will ultimately decrease development cost. Another is to emphasize leadership and accountability instead of management by objectives, or MBO. That just measures after-the-fact quality metrics anyways. Here's an example of an MBO. It could be to not exceed 100 defects for this release. This could make management look good, but still result in a project woefully late to market. Another quality planning concept is something called Kaizen. That's a Z, by the way. We've actually been talking about that and didn't even know it. This is known also as continuous improvement. Focus on constant process improvement can help a company remain competitive while maximizing the use of scarce resources. And we all know what that's like these days. We're going to spend a moment on grade versus quality. Quality deals with how well something works. Grade deals with the characteristics of the product and tends to represent the level of functionality instead. This is especially true in the software world where a grade can easily be misrepresented as quality. Let me give you an example, and I'm going to magically erase all that stuff. An installation program can simply copy files into a single default application folder, something like this, 
you drag the application to being installed into this folder. This is very popular on the Mac. Another variation of an installation program can ask all sorts of questions. This normally leads to a lot of upfront installation customer support questions. This is very popular on Windows. So you can see the big difference between even a Mac installer and a Windows installer in terms of complexity. This all ties into grade. Regardless of grade or depth of features, everything you do must be of high quality. I'm going to bring that back. Especially important for manufacturing is the concept of just-in-time, or JIT. Just-in-time brings inventory close to zero levels to avoid any waste. This could be a great way to do business, especially as the rapid rate of innovation makes components obsolete. This is especially true with hardware vendors. One company who's noted as being a master of JIT manufacturing is Dell Corporation. Software development, on the other hand, has become more of a downloadable commodity and a physical storefront with packaged products has, with just a few exceptions, become a thing of the past. Another is ISO. This represents a set of standards as defined by the International Organization for Standardization. That's where ISO comes from. ISO 9000 presents quality definitions and terminology. ISO 9001 basically uses ISO 9000 as the guide and defines requirements and is the basis to become certified. ISO 9004 presents a set of guidelines to develop quality systems such as policies, procedures, identification of tools designed to improve quality. The importance of an ISO 9000 type of standardization has been to manufacturing and it hasn't quite taken hold with software other than those working with Mill Aero, healthcare, and offshore contract software firms. It serves as a means to justify the organization's commitment to quality. Simply put, you've created a quality management plan, identified the gaps, and closed those gaps. Frequent audits are required to maintain ISO certification, and it can be quite costly and time-consuming. Lastly is CMMI. This stands for Capability Maturity Model Integration. It's also known as ISO 15504. So here we go. There are five levels to CMMI. CMI levels are numbered starting with the number one. CMMI level one is ad hoc, where processes are typically undocumented and reactionary. Level two assumes processes are somewhat repeatable. Level three is where most modern day software IT shops generally hover or strive to be. Level three is where you've defined and documented quality processes with the emphasis to successfully attain quality objectives. Now before I continue, take a breather and look at this diagram. Is your organization honestly at a level three or is it a little bit below? Level four gets a little tougher. This is known as managed, using quantitative techniques to measure performance, fix gaps, and making the process more predictable and controllable. And the last highest level is five, optimized, where innovative quantitative measurements deliver as planned and also there's a focus on continuous improvement based on some of the techniques I presented to you today. According to Dutton and McCabe, they've studied how CMI works and their belief is when a team with the right skills, with the right learning atmosphere, with open communication, and a focus on continuous improvement, that CMI can work quite well. In fact, you could say CMMI is very agile, but there is a huge danger. Big bad ogre is not real happy. But there's a huge danger in mixing CMMI with agile. And we'll take CMMI to the left and agile to the right. CMMI relies on a philosophy of external audits, where agile relies on more peer pressure, total transparency, and team responsibility to do the right thing. You run the risk of trying to merge those two into one. They're pretty counter to each other. So you run the danger of focusing on compliance on the left rather than letting the team police its own performance and effectiveness. Much of the thought process behind quality planning presented in this tutorial reinforces the basic undeniable belief of satisfying the customer with a quality, predictable product and service. All this factors in to quality planning. So now you know. Ha 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 ha!